Hey everyone and welcome to this review of Warhammer Age of Sigma Warcry Sentinels of Order. This is another faction book from Games Workshop uh, that includes all the Order factions for Warcry, believe it or not. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick through the book uh, slowly and um, hopefully my camera will be good enough quality so you can pick up what you need to but I'll be explaining a few bits as I go along. Um, so here we have the uh, Death to Chaos. Uh, this is just the uh, background of the book, the um, introduction to the book and what you'll need to play, stuff like that. And this is how to use the book in conjunction with that. Uh, here you'll see the the way they're doing the factions now. Um, you'll see you've got the main order faction and then all of this is included under order. But Cities of Sigma is branched off. It's slightly different. Um, which we'll explain in a minute. Um, but technically they're all order, but these guys get that symbol, and these guys get that symbol. Um, so we have the heroes and allies. So just like monsters and mercenaries, you can field uh, allies and monsters within your warbands uh, from the same faction. So uh, anyone with a leader mark... Or an ally mark can be included into a different faction. So you might have a Daughters of Cain leader as part joining your Fire Slayers, for instance, something like that. Uh, also is included is the monsters. So you no longer need the uh, Monsters and Mercenaries book. That's included in this. Mon monster hunting abilities, monster abilities. There are, I think there's just two monsters. You've got the War Hydra and the oh, Carabidus. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong, uh, but there you go. So you've got the just the two monsters. Um, there's no star dragons or uh, the Seraphon in here, but they haven't included any of the Seraphon monsters, which, you know, I think is a missed opportunity, maybe. So we start off with Cities of Sigma, which, as I just mentioned, has got a slightly different faction. Uh, to the others so what you have now is you have a Cities of Sigma and then under that you have different faction icons so it's a little bit like Chaos and then Iron Golems, Untamed Beasts, Signs of the Flame etc so it's a bit like that um, so what you do is you pick your Cities of Sigma and then you have to choose which city they howl from and then that will tell you which abilities to use so we had the Hammer Howl rules in White Dwarf, but we now have all the other cities, uh, Living City, Greywater, etc, etc. So you can now customise specifically to those great cities, and there's quite a few. Um, and then you've got the... So then you can make those warbands up out of any of these. So if you choose Tempest Eye, you might, you know, because it's got the Cities of Sigma icon here, you know, you can choose whatever you want. So it's kind of cool. It's, it's like you can pick your warband out of all of these and then it's basically you choose your abilities that you want to use with them. So you can really tailor them to be completely different. Um, I guess there'll be certain icons that will only make sense to certain fighters. So you've got the uh, Drukhari uh, which are quite cool. You've got the uh, the men, as it were, uh, from the free guild. One thing to note as well is you'll see all these uh, all these fighter profiles have the words included. So something the cards never had uh, were the names because they were multilingual. The cards used icons and numbers, which translate in all languages so games workshop just had to produce one set of cards and send it out to all continents um, but now they're obviously going to be doing these books based on different languages so they can now add the titles back in which i think is a big plus you can add gyrocopters now in games of warcry which is quite cool and we've got Assassins. So Cities of Sigma is huge. There are so much. So you can go all Elf or all Dwarden or all Man or Mix or all sorts. So here we've got the Daughters of Cain that are still uh, still fall under order. 
I'm currently reading the uh, Book of Morafi um, for uh, Age of Sigma, and uh, that is really interesting. So I'm surprised to see they're still under order, considering they just betrayed Sigma, but okay. So there's those rules. Loads of choice there for your fighters. Um, then you've got the uh, Shadow Stalkers, Daughters of Cain, the Cainites, Shadow Stalkers. That's the same as what was in the um, Warcry Catacombs set. Fire Slayers also. They get their own rules and warband. So these are leaders or allies. All of those are leaders. So they've got a huge choice of leaders and, the, and then just six fighters to choose from. So you can only have one leader in a warband. So it's not, not a great warband for diversity and choice. Uh, Iden F Deepkin uh, are in here. They already had rules, so I don't think there's any additions. Uh, maybe the Arkelian King. I don't know if he had a, a model, but he is 280 points with 38 wounds. And he's pretty quick with movement 10, so that's awesome. Just one page for them. Uh, carried on overlords. Um, you can see here you've got the leaders of those. I haven't really been following order, so I don't know really what kind of cards they had before. Uh, Luminef Realm Lords, I believe these are new. I don't think there have been cards for these yet, so you're getting a brand new warband, including this book, I believe. Uh, so that you've got the, your leaders and stuff there. And then you've got the Seraphon. So I think with the Seraphon, the biggest thing you get is a Croxigore. I couldn't see anything that was Ripidactyls as well. They move 10. Um, yeah, so you've got Croxigores here. But it's just Ripidactyls and Saurus. Oh, you've got Saurus Knights as well. So you can now take Mounted uh Saurus, but I believe they're only six inch moves, they're not terribly quick. But yeah, okay. Uh, then you've got Stormcast Eternals. Stormcast Eternals are still split into three factions. So you've got the um there's the three faction symbols there. But uh you've got the warrior chamber, which is the hammer. So that's all of these, which is quite a big selection. As you can see there, lots of choices. Basically different unit options, so different weapons, whether you take paired war blades or war hammers and shields and stuff like that. So it's great to have that choice. Um, and then you've got the Vanguard, which have has got uh, the Lord Aquila. Um, you've got things like the, uh, the Winged Knight Azeros and... Uh, Ether wings and griff hounds, plus the um, the vanguard stormcast uh, vanguard raptors. So that's a cool little. That's quite characterful to have in the in the uh, eight points in the realm of chaos because you know they are far reaching and they are sigma's agents of stealth and stuff like that. So that's cool. Uh, then you've got the sacrosanct chamber. Uh, this is. You've got a Lord Ordinator and stuff like that added. Two, actually. Um, yeah, and all different weapon options for the Evocators or the Sequitors and stuff like that. So that's cool. Uh, Sylvanef. So they've got a box set of models out of the models at the moment. So you probably get the cards in the box set as well, but um, not particularly a big warband. Branch Wraiths and... Kern off hunt masters and stuff like that. Um, no Kernoffi uh, that were included in Beast Grave Warband, so there's no rules for those, which is a shame. It would be nice to see some cards for them, but okay, no problem. Uh, and then that's that for order. Then you go into narrative play, so you get name generators, origin, leader, favor, background for each of the uh, factions. Including, uh, I think this is a reprint from the Warcry book, but there you go. Stormcast Eternals, uh, Sylvanef. Uh, then you've got your fated quests. So, also included in this book is some um, quests to play through. 
So here you've got, uh, and these are open to anyone with an order faction. And what you'll note here is uh, the terrain on the battle plans is the terrain from the Warcry Catacomb set, not the Warcry starter set. Uh, but you can switch out the terrain to any ravaged land or anything like that. Anything, any terrain you've got, you can make it work. It, they're not precious about it. It's about the narrative, so it's cool. It's all good. Gift of the Gods. These are all quite generic, I think. Heroes and Horrors. An uplifted soul. And then here's the honour and glory tables that you'll get for completing a fated quest. Uh, and then you've got the challenge battles, which are probably my favourite part of Warcry. You build up your exp your glory and your territory, and then you can, you know, you can lay a stake of like you you might need four dominated dominated territories, and you you put one at risk that if you lose, you lose that. And then here you can see you're going to face off against a Chaos Lord called Lord Valgar and all his um, warband of the Slaves of Darkness faction, and it's up to 1,500 points, so that's cool. And then you get a treasure hoard or an artifact of power at the end of it. Uh, this one's fun. Uh, it includes a Caradon uh, frigate, uh, which is a 60-wound model. Um, so that's an interesting addition. Here you've got a ancient guardian, which is like those massive Sylvan F tree men. There's his like damage table and his rules and that. So you'll basically be. I'm not sure if you're going up against him or including him, uh, but he'll tell you in the rules. Um, so yeah, uh, thick as thieves. Uh, that looks like you're you're taking on the um, the gobber palooza. That's quite cool. Uh, Halt the Ritual, which is in the catacombs. And you've got Blood and Serpents, which is the monster battle, which you'll, uh, if you complete this uh, challenge, you'll get to add the monster to your warband. So that's what you have to do to get a, to get the uh, monster added. And then that's it. There's a warband roster. And that is Warcry Sentinels of Order. So that's a really cool book. Uh, lots of scope for customization and stuff like that. It's great all the rules are under one place now. Lots of new rules as well added to the cards. So there's something, even if you've got all the cards previously, you might want some new rules some, or some new fated quests or some new challenge battles to play. So it's um, it's a well thought out, well laid out book. Uh, really easy to follow. Great to have all the rules in one place. And I think that's it from me from this video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers, bye-bye.